Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to graph radical functions, particularly using transformations. So here's the parent function of the square root of x. It increases at a decreasing rate, and it travels towards quadrant 1. Now, what if we put, let's say, a negative sign in front of it? What's going to happen? If we put a negative sign, this is going to flip over the x-axis. It reflects over the x-axis. Now, what if we put a negative on the inside of the radical? What's going to happen now? Relative to the original function, it's going to reflect over the y-axis. And this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. If we have a negative on the outside and on the inside, then relative to the parent function, it's going to reflect over the origin. So it's going to look like that. Now, if you ever forget these things, this is something that can help you. This is what I use. The sign that's in front of x, I'm going to associate it with x. The sign outside of the radical, I'm going to associate it with y. When x is positive, you need to travel towards the right. And when y is positive, you need to go up, which leads you to, um, towards quadrant 1. Now, in the second example, x is positive, but y is negative. So x is positive towards the right, y is negative going down. So this will take you towards quadrant 4, and this is quadrant 1. Now, on the third example, x is negative, y is positive. x is negative towards the left, y is positive as you go up. This will take you towards quadrant 2. And in the last example, x is negative and y is negative. So that will take you towards quadrant 3. So you can use the signs to help determine in what direction the graph is going to travel towards. Now let's say if we have the square root of x minus 2. What's the general shape of the graph? What's going to happen? This graph is going to shift two units to the right. If you set the inside part equal to 0, x is equal to 2. That's going to be the new origin, 2 comma 0. And it's going to go that way. Since there's a positive sign in front of the x and in front of the y. So let's say if we had square root x plus 3. This graph will be shifted 3 units to the left. And it's going to travel towards quadrant 1. Now what about this one, the square root of x plus 1? So this graph is going to go up one unit, and it's going to open towards the right. And if we have, let's say, negative square root x minus 2, this graph is going to shift down 2. Now, instead of going towards quadrant 1, it's going to be reflected. So it's going to go towards quadrant 4. It's going to look like that due to the negative sign. Go ahead and grab this function, the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. And also, determine the domain and the range of the function. So this graph is going to shift 1 unit to the right and up 2 units. So the new origin is at 1 comma 2. Now, to find the next two points, here's what you can do. The parent function is the square root of x. The square root of 1 is 1. So as you travel one unit to the right, go up 1 to get the next point. So that's going to be 2 comma 3. Now, the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So as you travel 4 units to the right, go up 2 units to get the next point. So this is going to be 5, comma 3. And so this is how the graph is going to look like. Now, what's the domain and range of this graph? So let's start with the domain. The domain has to do with the x values. The lowest x value is 1. The highest is infinity. So the domain is going to be 1, 2, infinity. And since it includes 1, we need to use a bracket. Now, the range 
is associated with the y values. The lowest y value is 2, the highest will be infinity. So the range is from 2 to infinity. Let's try another example. Let's graph the square root of 3 minus x plus 1. So if we set the inside equal to 0, we can see that x is equal to 3. That means that it's going to shift 3 units to the right. And because of the plus 1, it's going to shift up 1. Now we need to know what direction to go towards. That is towards quadrant 1, towards quadrant 2, 3, or 4. It's going to be in one of those directions. So here's how we can tell. We have a negative sign in front of x and a positive sign next to y. So x is negative, it's going to go towards the left, and y is positive, it's going to go up. So it's going to go in that general direction. Now we know that the square root of 1 is 1. So what that tells us is that as we travel one unit to the left, because we need to go to the left, the graph is going to go up one unit. So the next point is the point n positive 2, 2. Now, as we travel 4 to the left, the square root of 4 is 2. We need to go up 2 units. So that will take us to the point negative 1, comma 3. And so the graph, let's do that again. It's going to look something like that. So what's the domain and range of this function? The lowest x value is negative infinity, and the highest is 3. So therefore, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 3. You always want to write it from left to right, from the low x value to the highest x value. Now, the range, the lowest y value, is 1, and the highest is infinity. So from the lowest to the highest value, it's going to be from 1 to infinity. And so that's how you can write the domain and range of a radical function. Let's try one more example. Let's say y is equal to 3 minus the square root of 4 minus x. Feel free to graph this problem. And let's put a 2 in front of the radical. So first, let's set 4 minus x equal to 0. So x is 4. That means that the origin shifts 4 units to the right. And because we have a plus 3 in front, it's going to shift up 3 units. So the graph starts at 4 comma 3. That's the new origin. Now what direction is it going to travel towards? Towards quadrant 1, 2, 3, or towards quadrant 4? So we have a negative sign in front of x, which means it's going to go towards the left. And we have a negative sign in front of the radical, which means negative y, which is going to go down. So it's going to go towards quadrant 3. So now that we have the direction, let's go ahead and get some points. Now, because we have a 2 in front of it, everything is doubled. When x changes by 1, y will change by 2. When x changes by 4, y will change by 4 as well. So be careful with these things. And if x were to change by 9, y will change by 6. So as we travel, let's say, 1 unit to the left, we need to go down 2 units because of this. Instead of going down 1, we have to go down 2. The 2 is going to double the change in the y value. So this will take us to the point 3, 1. Now, as we travel 4, units to the left relative to the new origin, the y value will decrease by 4. So 4 units will take us to an x value of 0. We need to go down 4, which will take us to a y value of negative 1. So here's the next point. And as we travel, let's say, 9 units to the left, 
we need to go down six units. So that's going to take us to the point negative 5, negative 3. So now let's go ahead and graph it. Now what is the domain and range of the function? Starting with the domain, the lowest x value is negative infinity, and the highest x value, it stops at positive 4. So it's from negative infinity to 4. Now as for the range, the lowest y value is negative infinity, and the highest is 3. So it's negative infinity to 3. And so that's it for this example. Now I'm going to do one more example for those of you who like to use a table. Let's try this. 2 square root x plus 1 minus 3. So we can see that the graph is going to shift 1 unit to the left and down 3 units. So the new origin is that negative 1, negative 3. So let's plot that point first. Now, you want to choose x values that will lead to a perfect square. So once you have your new origin, the next x value that you want should be one unit away from the origin. So one unit away from negative 1 is 0. And we know that this graph is going to go towards quadrant 1 because x and y are both positive. So you want to choose one point to the right of negative 1. Then you want to travel 4 units to the right of negative 1, which will take you to an x value of 3. And if you want another point, travel 9 units to the right of negative 1, which will lead you to 8. Negative 1 plus 9 is 8. The reason why you want to do this is because 1, 4, and 9 are perfect squares. If we replace x with 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1, times 2 is 2, 2 minus 3 will give us a y value of negative 1. If we plug in 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4, minus 3, this is going to be 1. If we plug in 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. And now all we need to do is simply plot the points. So the next point is 0, negative 1, and then it's uh, 3, comma 1, and then 8, comma 3. So this graph looks something like this. And so the domain, the lowest x value we see is negative 1, the highest is infinity. So the domain is going to be from negative 1 to infinity. And as for the range, the lowest y value is negative 3, the highest is positive infinity, so it's from negative 3 to infinity. And that's it.